To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder, a witness of Christ, of Christ's suffering, and one who also will share in the glory to be revealed. He shep be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be, not greedy for money, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. All of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another, because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due course. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Just a minute. <laughs> Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls among you, like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little, after you have suffered a little while, with himself restore you, make you strong, firm, and steadfast. <coughs> to him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Father God, we thank you. Actually, I was really read, read well, and we just praise you for Pam. Lord, we thank you. Bless her. Pour out your spirit on her. We, we rejoice in our sister in Christ. And we pray for Tim, Lord. We thank you for the word you've placed on his heart. We thank you for his calling. And we thank you for his anointing. So speak, Lord. May our hearts be open. May we receive your word, the word of life. May it strengthen us and do all the things that you want it to do in us. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Dean. Thank you, Pam. Thank you very much for that last-minute change. I do appreciate it. And it was very, very well read, so thank you. <laughs> well, I wonder, how are you feeling this morning? Interesting question, isn't it? Maybe we're worried. Maybe we're disappointed, anxious, fearful. I could go on. Maybe we feel alive, maybe we feel excited that the Lord is with us through all of this. However you feel this morning, we know that we are currently potentially facing a crisis. We know that we are, if you're like me, watching the latest news update to see what is happening across the globe. This week, I seem to have developed quite a, 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 a new routine. As I'm sat in my study, particularly when I'm sat in my study or in the office, I look at the BBC News live feed to see what's going on. As soon as something comes up, I then go to the Church of England website to see what the guidance is now, because it's changing that regularly. I then go on to Facebook and look at a group that I'm in called Newbie Vicars, which is for those of us in our first post as vicar, to see what they're saying about the guidance that's based on the BBC News. Then I do the work I'm supposed to be doing, and then the cycle starts all over again, and we go back to the BBC News, back to the Church of England, etc., etc. 
Of course, that, I do that, not because I'm fearful of what's going to happen, but I do that to keep up to date with things. Because I think at the moment it's important that we know what's happening. It's important for us to pick up, what the me- not necessarily what the media is saying, but pick up the fact of what is happening. Not the media hype, but the fact, the scientific fact of what is going on. Who knew that last week when I wrote that letter to you all, that there'd be another, I think is it three emails you've had from me so far, and I would I pretty much almost guarantee you will be getting more from me this coming week. It's changing that regularly. Please try and keep up to date, but don't worry if you don't. Who knows, that email that went out yesterday could already have been superseded. As of half ten this morning, it hadn't when I checked the church website. Of course, us as a church family as well this week are dealing with disappointment. Disappointment that we decided to postpone the baptism of Kobe and Komal. An event that I know we were all really excited for and looking forward to welcoming them, welcoming Ify and Victor's family and friends and sharing on what was supposed to be a wonderfully joyous occasion today. And I know that we are disappointed with that and we share with Ify and Victor in their disappointment. When I saw them on Friday, as I said, I think I said earlier today, we said we're not cancelling, we are postponing because it will happen. So it's an interesting point that I think we find ourselves in today. A virus that over the course of, what is it, two and a half months, I think, has completely changed the landscape of the world that we live in. Suddenly we find we can't go on holiday somewhere we wanted to. Amanda and I are supposed to be going to Italy in May. It might not happen. We're supposed to be going up to Harrogate after Easter. It might not happen. Suddenly we find that our plans that we'd made for so long might not happen. We just don't know. But for some reason, we seem unable to buy toilet rolls. We're unable to buy pasta, rice. I even heard this week that Steve couldn't get corned beef for his corned beef sandwich. (laughs) He got some in the end, excellent. But what I find amazing in all of this is how people are reacting to COVID-19, to be medically correct, so I keep getting told off by Amanda. To me, the world is in fear. The world is in panic. People are incredibly fearful for what is to come. I heard it described yesterday on Facebook as like standing on a beach, looking at the tsunami coming and being able to do nothing about it. Amanda said to me yesterday, is it like that night in 1939, waiting for Winston Churchill to declare war, say that the country was at war? I don't know. I didn't live through that. Maybe that's not a fair comparison. But there is the unknown. There's the fear of the unknown. Will I get the virus? What happens if I do? Maybe for the extroverts amongst us, how will I cope in isolation for 14 days, if not more? Well, I read an interesting article this week, and it was all about this word. My clicker's not working. (laughs) Could somebody click? Could you mind clicking, Chris? Thank you. It was all about this word. Awfulizing. Now, I don't know if this is a proper word from the Oxford English Dictionary, but I really like it. Awfulizing. It goes something like this. Forgive the Americanism. I did change the Z to an S. Coronavirus is spreading into my city. What if I'm infected? What if I already have it and don't know it yet? What if I'm spreading it to my family right now? What happens if we all get it? What happens if I die from it? Maybe some of us are thinking like that, or we can relate to that. Maybe people in our community can relate to that. Maybe we are worried about what's going to happen. And we can't, but we can't live in that heightened state of fear all the time. It's just not possible. We have to carry on living as best we can, given the circumstances. We have to do all that we can. So the question becomes, I think, how do we respond to that? How do we respond to awfulizing? Well, we look at factual data. You go to the next slide, Chris. We look at a fact. The scientific fact that is out there, not necessarily the media's interpretation. So rather than saying, what if it happens to me, how about we say, well, what happens if I don't get it? 
Who can I help? Who can I go out and support and show the love of Christ to? That's how we should be thinking. Let's say, what happens if I don't get hold of this? Let's hold on to perspective. What have we already brought? What has God already brought us through? Each of us here have our own testimony of what God has already done in our life, of what God has already brought us through. Trials, tribulations, difficulties. And we are here today by God's grace. So we will get through this. The Lord will prevail. He will bring us through. Hold on to perspective that the Lord is king. Live and live in the present moment. That's what I think is important. We need to be living in the present moment, not looking going, what might happen? Because the fact is, friends, we just don't know. Yes, as a church, we've done some contingency planning. We met on Friday night. And I hope and pray that in a few months we look back and we say, well, that was all an overreaction. I really do hope and pray that that is the case. But it might not be. We might look back and say, well, I'm really glad that we did that. I really hope we don't look back and say, I wish we'd done more. The fact of the matter is, we just don't know what's going to happen. Of course, in terms of perspective, there's lots of things going around on Facebook at the moment about other things that are killing far more than COVID-19. Hunger, war, cancer, seasonal flu. Amanda and I watched the Great British Bake Off stand up to cancer yesterday and heard a very moving story of a, a quite a young girl who had died from cancer. Friends, that's still happening out there. Have you heard it on the news? So why is the world in panic? Why is everything being stopped? Well, these are answers I don't have. I can't give you answers. But what we can offer each other is that we as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ can speak right into the heart of those matters. Am I fearful? No. Am I anxious? No. Am I panicking? No. Why? Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. That's not to say I haven't panicked or I haven't felt fearful. I have. I've got to be honest. But I come back to that. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. We know that the Lord is big enough to take our fears and our anxieties in this time. However you're feeling this morning, take it to the Lord in prayer. What I'm concerned about is how we continue worshipping in this present time. How do we reach out into our community in the present time? Support those in need. I'm most concerned that we miss an opportunity to share the love of Jesus Christ with our neighbor in the coming few months than I am about whether I'm going to get the virus. I'm concerned to make sure that we, as the body of Christ in Bushmead, can do all that we can to show our neighbors Christian love. Because, friends, things across the globe are being canceled. It's all we're hearing about in the media. But what about the things that aren't being cancelled? Next slide, please. What about these? Love hasn't been cancelled. Prayer hasn't been cancelled. Conversations haven't been cancelled. Kindness hasn't been cancelled. Reading hasn't been cancelled. Songs haven't been cancelled. Worship as a way of life has not been cancelled. Hope has not been cancelled. Amen? Amen? There is a lot of good but we are not hearing it. So it's up to us to share that goodness. It's up to us to share that message with those whom we meet. It's down to us. Yesterday, I was sat, I'm looking at the BBC News. The top 10 posts all started with the word coronavirus. I had struggled to find a news article that was not about the virus. And do you know what it was when I did? A 19-year-old was shot dead in Coventry yesterday. Where have we heard that? I had to really, really dig to find that. And you know what? When I saw that, I just got on my knees and I wept. I wept for the state of things at the moment. And all I could do was cry, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mercy. 
Friends, we do need to be honest with each other as well. There is a chance that someone we know, a friend or a family member, maybe even someone sat in this church right now, may get this virus. It is a possibility. It is a real possibility, and we have to accept that. But the Bible tells us 366 times, do not be afraid. It tells you for every single day of the year, including a leap year, do not be afraid. I haven't been through and personally counted, but I'm assuming my Bible software is right or wherever I got that fact from. But it's something to hold on to. I haven't, I, you know, I've heard from vicars elsewhere, churches are already closed in this land. Congregations are already in isolation, some not so far away from us. It is happening. But don't lose sight of the fact that the Lord says, cast all your anxieties on me because I care for you. That's the message. That's the message that we can hold on to. The great Dietrich Bonhoeffer talks about fear. Next slide, please. He says this. Fear crouches in people's hearts. It hollows out their insides until their resistance and strength are spent. Fear secretly gnaws and eats away at all the ties that bind a person to God and to others. Fear can and will eat away at our relationship with God if we let it. So how do we avoid that? How do we avoid that fear taking us away from God? Well, we look out for those in our community. We pick up the phone and check on a friend or a family member. If we're not ill or having to self-isolate, we offer to get food or supplies for someone, assuming you can get hold of them. We pray to the Lord. We seek his peace, that peace which passes all understanding. The peace that only the Lord can give. And friends, fear will creep in if we let it. If we're on our own or if we're isolating, rather than letting the fear get to you, turn to the scriptures. Spend time with the Lord. Read your Bible. Pray more. Take it, if you have to do this, take it as an opportunity to deepen your relationship with our Father in heaven. Take it as an opportunity. I appreciate if you're really unwell, that's not going to be possible. But if you have to isolate as a family member, do that. I was speaking to somebody yesterday in my study and I was looking for a book on my shelves and I saw this big pile of books and I thought, oh yeah, that's quite good. I could read those if I end up having to isolate and it would reduce my unread books from this to probably this. (laughs) But try and take a positive view of things if it happens. Again, it's all ifs and buts, isn't it? If this happens... A friend of mine in Texas who is in isolation said on Facebook, there's one company that won't suffer from my isolation and that's Home Depot because I'm going to work on my house. So he's going to spend time decorating his house, doing the projects that he needs to do. Amanda said to me, think of all the craft projects I can finally finish in 14 days. (laughs) Let's try taking a positive view if it happens. Don't sit in fear on your own or with those in your house. But take a positive view. Pick up the phone. Communication doesn't have to stop just because you can't get out and see people. Pick up a phone and say, hi, how are you? But if, as well, you search hard enough, there are glimmers of hope appearing in the news. If you search hard enough, yes, there's, what, 140,000 infected, but there's over 70,000 that are now recovered. Where have we heard that? You have to dig on the news. Thank you for that fact, Steve. I also saw yesterday that football clubs have responded with the closure. They'd already prepared lots of food for the weekend. So what have they done? They've donated it all to charities and homeless shelters for people who need to eat. Because guess what, friends? Those that don't have a home, they still don't have a home. Those that can't afford to eat, they still can't afford to eat. So it got me thinking, how do we bless our community? How do we bless our neighbors in these unprecedented times? It may feel very small that we can offer, but actually that one act of kindness might be something that makes a huge difference. 
think the next slide is what I think it is. It is. This could be an act of kindness. I saw this again on Facebook. Do something like this. Put a note through your neighbor's door. Go down your street and say, I'm not self-isolating at the moment. Can I help? Give them your phone number. It may be somebody you don't even know, but guess what? They may become a friend. It may rebuild that connection. Wouldn't that be great? Our country was so divided. But what if this, if we can turn this into good and use this to reconnect to our community, to reconnect to each other, to get beyond the Brexit divide and to be a community once again, we can turn it into good. Let's keep Christ at the center of it all. It is easy to slip into that mindset of what's going to happen of where are we going? What's the next thing? Maybe it's happening in your home. Maybe it's happening in your work. You can get swept along with everything that's going on. But friends, it's time for us to take a stand and let's do things differently. Let's not get caught up in that tidal wave of what's coming, but let's bring Christ into the midst. This is, after all, the season of Lent. It's a time when we look out and we care for each other. It's a time when we reflect on ourselves And I know a number of people in this church doing the 40 acts of kindness this Lent where you bless somebody each day. It's a time when we as Christians should be preparing for the pain of Good Friday and the celebration and joy of Easter Sunday. And I'll be honest with you, this last week, I don't think I've thought about Easter once. I don't even think I've thought about Lent once. Apart from, is it worth getting a banner for the church? Are our services going to go ahead? That's probably the only time I've thought about Easter this week because my mind has been taken up with all this stuff that's going on. Will it happen? Will our services continue? We just don't know. But we can do the good things. We can put things like this through our neighbor's door. But it also brings me to another question. Quite an important question. How much is COVID-19 getting in the way of our faith? How much are we allowing this virus to get in the way of our relationship with God? How much of this virus is the enemy using to distract you and me? Is he going to trip us up in our walk with God? I believe it's a real question that we have to grapple with as Christians. If we cave in and believe the hype of the media, the enemy is winning. Don't let him. He has no power. He has no authority. Jesus Christ is our authority. 1 Peter 5.8 says, Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. The enemy is having a field day at the moment, friends. Look at what's going on. Next slide, please. That should not happen. That cannot happen. Next slide, please. This cannot happen. A man in Golders Green Sainsbury's wouldn't give an elderly lady just one of a number of the last packets of dry pasta he'd grabbed. He said no when she asked him politely. Very upsetting. We did a national kindness effort to look out for the elderly, infirm, and the vulnerable. Hashtag Be kind. That cannot happen. That previous slide cannot happen. Friends, we're Christians. I know, I'm assuming none of us are doing this. We're not buying into the media hype. If you are, I implore you, stop it. That cannot happen. Think about the vulnerable in our society. Think about those that have to go week on week and can't buy toilet roll. And if you think about the fact that we are fighting over toilet roll, never, ever, ever look down on anybody fleeing war or famine again. Because I'm afraid I'm not going to listen to you if you fought over a toilet roll. Think of the people that are fleeing because of war and famine. And then look, is it really in perspective to be fighting over a toilet roll or pasta or whatever? Be alert, friends. Don't let the enemy get hold of you because he's having a field day. 
claim Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of this nation, of this world. We claim that victory in Jesus' name. We know the victory has been won and we claim that this morning. Rest in Jesus. Keep your faith in him. Put your trust in him and we will prevail. We're not hearing that message on the media, are we? So if we're not hearing that on the media, it's up to us to get that message out there. Of course, we do have to be sensible. We do have to follow guidelines. We do have to follow guidance. I'm sure you're all familiar with the story of the man and the flood. An old man stood on his porch and watched floodwaters surround his house. A neighbor came in his pickup to rescue him. But the old man waved away the rescue and said, don't worry about me, God will take care of me. Floodwaters rose higher. The old man had to move up to his second floor balcony. A boat comes along to rescue him. The old man waved away the rescue and said, don't worry about me, God will take care of me. The floodwaters rose even higher. And the old man had to climb on his roof. A helicopter came to rescue him this time. But the old man waved away and said, don't worry about me, God will take care of me. A large tree washed down the river, smashed the house, and the old man drowned. When he arrived in heaven, he told God, I don't understand, why didn't you take care of me? To which God replied, well, I sent you a pickup, a boat, and a helicopter. What more could you ask? <laughs> you get the point, friends. We have to follow the guidance that comes down. It may seem extreme. It may seem that why on earth are we having to do this? But we have to. And I know you understand that. And thank you for adhering to the guidelines that are ever-changing. There are those, though, that will think, well, God will take care of me. We can carry on as we always do. We can't subscribe to that train of thought. I'm afraid we can't. As I've said, I know of a number of churches that have now closed down, a number of vicars and congregations in isolation. Are we saying to them, well, God wasn't protecting them? Because that's the message we're getting by say, using those lines. We're not saying that at all. We're saying that we're following the guidance. We are honoring the Lord. The guidance is coming from medical officers who know what they're talking about. We have a duty of care as Christians to look out for those amongst us that are vulnerable. The start of the reading tells us, be shepherds of God's flock that's under your care. Serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you're willing, as God wants you to be. So I tell you this morning, we will continue to follow all the guidance that comes down from the church because it's the right and proper thing to do. But I promise you right now, I promise you all right now that I will do everything in my power to keep this building open. I will do everything I can to continue our patterns of worship as we do and if not more. I want to get this building open for people to come in and pray together, assuming we're allowed to. And friends, if this get, building gets shut down and we're still allowed to meet outside, we have our services right out there in front of the community and we say to them, Jesus Christ is King. I promise you that. That I will do everything I can to keep us going. Let's promise together to lift high the name of Jesus in this time. Let's promise to do what we can. Let's be different. Let's show the world that we're different. The enemy's having a field day. Let's continue donating to the food bank. Let's donate to the hygiene bank. Let's give them supplies that they need. Let's keep going. I saw another article yesterday called Christians, This is Our Moment. This is a call to clarity and to mission. Next slide. It was subtitled, There's No Need to Panic. But there is a need to plan well and wisely. These days we turn to celebrities and media personalities for news and advice. People who have little wisdom share information to broad bases even if it's wrong. Social media is not our friend here. So I implore you, if you're putting anything on social media, make sure it's true. Let's seek the truth. Let's seek the expertise and not the personalities. Let's seek clarity and not succumb to panic. 
Let's remember to cast all of our anxiety and fear on the Lord because he cares for us. Philippians 4, 6-7 Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Let's seek hope and not fear. Let's do what Jesus says in Matthew 6. It's interesting. These are all things that we've had sermons on in the last few weeks. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life? Let's focus our hearts on where there is hope, on where there is courage. Let's continue to seek the kingdom of God, a kingdom that we know is untouched by death, Revelation 21.4. Let's seek mission and not isolation. Let's work together. Because, friends, this is a real moment when we can come together like never before. We can come together and we can serve our neighbor like never before. This is an opportunity for the church. Not just this church, but the church in this nation and in the world. It's a time when we can show people what it means to be a Christian. It's a time when we can put our words into action. It's a time when we put our money where our mouth is. We love and we serve one another. It's a time when we live out our faith to those around us. So how is God calling you this morning to respond? And how is God calling us to respond? Let's just pause and take a moment to think that. How is God calling us to respond? One way we respond is we stand and we declare our faith. So can I encourage you to stand if you're able? And we are going to declare the words of the Apostles' Creed together. Because we believe in Jesus Christ. brothers and sisters let us affirm our faith in God the one who we cast our anxiety on for we know that he cares for us I believe in God the father almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please do take your seats. I'm going to invite Joy to come and lead us in our prayers.